What's up, everybody? Pastor Todd and Denise here. Wanted to welcome you to the Love Church Story podcast. This is super exciting. Yeah. I mean, we're only a couple episodes in. We've been wanting to do this forever. And so we wanted to introduce this special one coming up. Ken and Michelle, uh, old school Calvary Chapel people. Right. And really, we wanted to just honor them, you know, with the movie Jesus Revolution coming out that celebrates, you know, Pastor Chuck, Greg, Lonnie, some of the OGs in this movement that we are still in today. Yeah. And here Ken and Michelle roll in, you know, they would go all the way back with Pastor Chuck and helping him through different ministry, architect, engineer, extraordinaire. So we really wanted to share this story. And the cool thing is Pastor Cap, one of my best friends, was able to kind of just interview them and allow them to share some of their story. Yeah. You're going to enjoy it. It's so fun to get the rich DNA of Calvary Chapel at large, and they are literally living <laughs> testimonies so cool. of the movement that God, the Holy Spirit did in this generation. So we wanna celebrate you and them yeah. together. And again, remember the, the goal of this podcast and really everything we do is to honor God and to help people. And so that's the prayer for this. So uh, sit back, relax, take some notes, enjoy this podcast. So uh, how did you both meet each other and meet Jesus. <clears throat> we met Bible, smuggling Bible in the China. Well, that's a hook. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. So introduce your names real yes. quick. Yes. Ken Flea Wilkinson. Ken, Wil Ken and I'm Michelle Wilkinson. So you guys met smuggling Bibles in China. China. Okay, unpack that for me. Well, we were on the same team. I was going to a different church, Calvary, and he was going to Harvest Christian Fellowship, Greg Laurie's church. And this opportunity came up to go to China. I applied. They, they accepted me, and he and another pastor were leading the group, and off we went into China and into Burma. We went behind, we went into the jungle. We had a gentleman by the name of True Love that got us past all the Burmese checkpoints because there was a civil war going on. And we went into there and administered to the people there, came back out, and our last stop was Japan to meet with the board of directors, and that's pretty much it. So we kind of hooked up. Afterwards. Yeah. Yeah, afterwards he oh, called me, and I'm like, Lord, I, no. I was showing a picture to my parents. Mm-hmm. My, my dad says, who was that gal across from you? It was like he was saying, looks pretty 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 says i think she's the one for you and then he called me and because true love was in town i was not i was so sold on being single for the lord i had plans i was moving to japan i was going to keep smuggling bibles no but it was okay you know you just keep pursuing and he pursued yeah <clears throat> well i was raised catholic and they converted over to mormonism Whoa. Okay. I became an elder in the Mormon church. Yeah. Wow. But after I fell away from that, I figured Catholicism on one side, Mormon was on the other side, everything else was going to be so eat, drink, and be married to her. Tomorrow I will die. And he did. He so I got offered into the Hollywood, opened up a part owner of a hot dog stand in Hollywood. And then to that period, I came across a backslidden Christian gal, and she, and she invited me to go to her parents, who used backslidden. Her parents went to Calvary Chapel, Coast of Mesa. Yeah, Chuck's church. So she invited me to go down there one time just to check it out. That's why I found out about being born again to Pastor Chuck Smith. You familiar with Pastor Chuck? Of course. If it wasn't for Pastor Chuck, we wouldn't have I know. We wouldn't be here. What? So, so that's, that's that point. Let me ask you a question then. So you were a Mormon, a Catholic. You were an elder in the Mormon church. What was it about through Christianity that drew you to the Lord that you didn't see in these other religions? Good question. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I just figured it was a right thing. Yeah, I think I was looking for God. I fear, well, you know, Mormonism on one side, Catholicism on the other side, everything else in between. So I was open to anything. But when God spoke to you through your girlfriend's parents. Yeah. Go down to see, invited me to go down to Calvary Chapel, Costa Mesa. 
was to go down there and check it out. So I went down there and went, whoa. The Holy Spirit wooed him. And so I went back. I was living in Monterey Park, Cal- in California. I go, we go home. I would listen to Pastor Chuck Smith on the radio from Monterey mm-hmm. Park. Wow. And I finally gave my life to, to God. And the main time I had no Bible, I had this one Bible that I had when I was a Mormon. Right here. Wow. And I did his Tell the rainbow. It's his King James <laughs> Bible, but they insert the Mormon stuff in the middle. Sorry. So I got the Bible out. I go in my the rafters in my garage, pull it out, and I ripped out the Mormon part. <laughs> and that's my Bible I, yeah. I grew up with. It's the missionary edition, of course. <laughs> the missionary edition. Of the LDS Church. Thank you. You guys became missionaries, um, not for the Mormon Church, no, but obviously for the Church Jesus. of Jesus Christ. Yeah. So, okay, I just want to hear real quick. Going to China, smuggling Bibles, that is, uh, that's not for the faint of heart. So, how did you guys get drawn by the Lord to go and do that? Well, remember at Harvest, oh, yeah. they had, um, what is it called? The Prayer Brigade, remember? Yeah, oh, yeah. They had, for, for missionaries, and they were sending people out a lot. And enjoying the Prayer Brigade, I was going somewhere else. That's when these opportunities came up, and there was an organization called Living Waters International. It doesn't exist anymore. It operates a lot like Open Doors with Brother Andrew. And he's gone. Se- he went several times. Oh, yeah. And there was an opportunity. I was going to a missions fellowship at Costa Mesa, and this opportunity came up. And I was like, I'm all on this. I want to go. Applied. Was ex- what they took me. And there was a team of nine of us, I think, that went. So... It was pretty exciting. We were going to take this side trip to Cambodia, and that's when the Khmer Rouge had just finished annihilating. And I went and saw the movie in, what was it called, uh, Living Fields? I can't recall. Mm-hmm. But it's, no, 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 for the Khmer Rouge. Oh, yeah. Oh. Uh, but it's talking about the people that, that, that were pulled out and saved and also what's happened to them. And it was brutal shook in my bo- boots, called the pastor and said, I can't go. I'm going to be a detriment to the team. This is, I don't still think I should do this. And he was laughing. He was, he's laughing. I'm laughing. You're laughing. He says, you'll be fine. We ended up not going, but that almost prevented me from going because of the accountability, you know, being counting the cost of what that would be. Um, but I was okay. And we ended up not going plain, cha- uh, cha- uh, plans changed. And we still did China and Burma, like I said, which is called M- Myanmar now. And that's how that happened. So pretty much. I, w- I want to ask a follow up question because you guys lived a very radical life for Jesus. You got that right. You went all in going into a, a country where for the people that are listening, it's it's a closed country when mm-hmm. it comes to receptivity to the gospel. That's why you have to smuggle in Bibles. Yeah. And you were convinced by your dad that maybe this could be the woman for you. So that began there. But then you guys came back to America. Uh-huh. And one thing that I think uh, the American church really struggles with is how to be a missionary in our homeland here. Mm. So if you could, could you share with the people listening to this story, what does it look like to surrender to Jesus daily wherever you are? I say, Lord is my shepherd, and daily I have to go to be fed. Mm-hmm. And the Lord is, provides me the feed, spiritual feed, food I need every day to live for Him. You know, it's a reckoning, it's death to self, which a lot of people don't necessarily know what that means. Mm-hmm. So it's, explain that. What does that mean? It's putting yourself aside and letting Jesus reside. And that's the key to everything. Being, having an open hand, willing to hear what he has to say, knowing there's things I have to lay at his feet. Is, are the decisions we're going to make as a couple or as individuals, are those in line with scripture? Or if in a marriage, for us, is that in line with how Ken has led our house? That's very, very important to us. 
But we also, as we walked with Christ for over 40 years, surrender comes at different times in more potent ways. Like right now, Ken has dementia, and he has a form of Parkinson's that just affects his lower extremities. So his ability to understand sometimes the world around him uh, becomes difficult, but not Jesus. Jesus is never difficult. Mm. He's crazy. He is just not difficult. He speaks to Ken all the time. He speaks to me, of course, all the time. But if we didn't choose, it's a choice. You have to live in a surrendered way to which the gospel is true, the Bible is true. If you disagree with the Bible, then you're wrong. You have to change your thinking. Right. But also giving yourself enough grace to fall down and make mistakes and learn from that and really tie yourself back into the Lord, if that makes any sense at all. So it's it's choice. It's daily choice. And sometimes it comes in those little moments. It's, it, are, are we the same people away from, from the view of others? Are we the same without an audience? That's where the integrity and the surrender comes in, so that when who we are here is who you, you see us on Sunday or Bible, st- whatever, at the grocery store. Are we, dre- are we choosing to bring that into everything that we do? And it requires sometimes a lot of surrender. Have there been times where like, no thanks, we're not doing that? Absolutely, absolutely. You can't be human. You can't not do that. But the cross, if our vertical relationship, huh, with the Lord is right on, then our horizontal yeah. will fall right into place. It's an overflow. Exactly. Is that right? The, the ministry out is an overflow. Of and the whole self-fed thing, it's responsibility. You have to. You're not responsible for my walk. PT isn't. Isn't that amazing? He isn't responsible for my walk. I am responsible. He's responsible. So there's a lot of rejoicing, but it's not about me. It's about the Lord. That makes sense. My father-in-law is really, I think, providential that I get to have the privilege to interview you guys. My father-in-law was an incredible minister in the city in Omaha, oh, nice. Nebraska. He had a he had a, a ministry called Fresh Start. They're actually doing a Fresh Start downstairs yes, right now. Yes, they are. Yeah, so um, he was one of the most remarkable men of God I've ever met. Traveled the the world, missionary to a lot of different countries. I think forty plus countries. At wow, least. wonderful. And um, he passed away in twenty twenty from uh, a psychological cognitive cognitively declining disease, mm-hmm. and it. It was a four-year process, and it was one of the most heartbreaking things I'd ever witnessed firsthand, but also for my mother-in-law and my wife. And one thing that I thought was so amazing about how he finished his race Mm -hmm. was his quality of life was taken away from him. He was put in a hospice. This is a guy whose life, not just his ministry, but his life was about connecting with people and sharing Jesus with people. And that was being taken away from, felt like. Yet I've never seen somebody go through a tragedy like that and finish so well and be so focused on King Jesus. And I think about people who go through, we all go through trials in life Mm -hmm. to a certain degree. And the temptation is when we're going through trials to focus inward. Absolutely. Rather than focus vertically and think about how can I be used by the Lord, even in this season, Mm -hmm. to minister for the gospel's sake. I'd love for you to share, Ken, and you can help as, mm-hmm. as you see fit, but what has it been like to, to be a minister of the gospel, even in this season of trial? This is like, Jesus suffered like he suffered tremendously. So what was my little trouble compared to what Jesus did for me? So that's the least I can give myself to somebody else. This is my second source of strength. Mm-hmm. I just praise God every day. I'm waiting for the rapture. <laughs> oh, yeah. I want a new body. <laughs> you know, we've oh, yeah. told people when we were telling people what was going on, and through, especially through email, because it was just too many, that not to feel sorry for us, and we really mean that, because I think we 
have a leg up, if you will, or a gift that has been given to us that almost feels unfair we can't share, but we are. There's an intimacy unlike no other that we've experienced through this. Mm. There's God takes you into what we can seemingly feel lost or avoid, but it's it never has been. There's always been this specific speaking huh, of the Lord to both of our hearts, and especially to him. I see it on him. I've told people that God has him and he has us. We did that at a huddle one week. And after the huddle, a couple of weeks after that, I think, Ken was struggling in church, and I went out to find, try to find water. And Gabe Breyer, I saw him. He's like, I don't know, we don't know a lot of people. I was like, oh, thank you, Lord. Just let me find somebody I know. And there he was. And he got me some water. And he said, why don't we meet after uh, the encounter, which we did. And that man prayed stuff that he does I mean, he, he, nobody really knows us yet. Mm-hmm. We walked away, and I said, did you hear what that man said? And what he said is he was affirming Ken um, that through the Lord, that the Lord was telling Ken through David that you're, you run the race, you're, you've done well, and you will finish strong. And other specifics that, if I told you, they wouldn't make any sense, but they make sense to us. Sure. It was wonderful. And about a, about a week after that, I get this um, article that again, it was just it completed. It's not completed. We're on this journey where God is definitely taking you to heaven. We can see yeah, that, yeah. and it's. I'm not. I don't want to lose him, mm-hmm. but to lose him to Jesus, it's okay, and He's letting me be part of that. And when David, so David, I got this thing, this article, it's great. It's called Senior Saints, We Need You. And it said, you know, many mainline, oh, no, no, I'm sorry. It should come as no surprise then that many older adults are declining in discipleship in this very season of life when they should focus more than ever on preparing with God. They're staggering spiritually, sometimes even departing from the faith. It is time to step up our efforts at ministering to and with these older brothers and sisters. They have so much to contribute to the church. Wisdom is the is with the aged and understanding in length of days. Can you guess where that book that that's from? Let's try Job. Okay, Job twelve twelve. <laughs> but they need help discerning how to best mature in faith and practice as their bodies decline. They need encouragement to finish their race with endurance, resilience, and joy. And I'm telling you right now, Love Church is doing that. He brought us here for many reasons, but the biggest reason is escorting. And you know, he's he greets at the door. It's so cute. He was an usher at Harvest. He couldn't do that now. It's, it's a little different, but what they do. Oh, yeah, he's a little greeter. And the kids sometimes like it, and other kids are like, but um, I you can, can, yeah, you can, still, <laughs> you can still do your part, even though you're, in, you're dying on. and, you know, rejoicing. Yeah. I praise God every day. And the music, you know? Oh, yeah, music. Hello. Um, it's a big push for the, for the next generation. And we've been watching a lot of Elevation Worship at home. We watch worship all day. And um, some oldies but goodies, which I don't know if you would even know this person, Keith Green. I know Denise does. Yes, the legend Keith Green. <laughs> yes, oh, and yeah. Mustard Seed Faith. Mm-hmm. And I, it dawned on me one Sunday, I said, you know what we're, what we're seeing? We're seeing the mustard seed faith, the Keith Greens, all that God is continuing to do through the next generation. And it's wonderful. It's wonderful. Uh, Yeah, the worship is crazy great. Love it. Love it. It's balanced. Yes, it's loud, but it's a balanced loud. I've been in loud where it's not so, but it's great. So I want to jump into 
how you guys made it here to Omaha, Nebraska, because there's a story there and then how you guys got connected to Love Church. So how did you guys, how did God lead you from coast to coast to no the coast. place with no coast? We, our daughter, son-in-law, son-in-law, were living in Ogallala, Nebraska. Never, I go, Ogallala, Ogallala. Never heard of it. Sounds... Cowboys. Sounds like a fun place. Our son-in-law is a mask, uh, state patrol officer, and when he came out of the academy, or no, I think whatever it's called, that's where they put him. So that's where we went for a while, and then he was able to transfer back to Omaha. But for five years, we had been really looking for where to move. We knew that God was going to retire him. He's always been self-employed. And we just wanted to be sure we landed where God wanted us, not follow the kids and then spirit should die. Uh, we've seen that too much. But all roads led here. And so we came. And we didn't know if we were going to rent or buy. And I was taking care of all the house stuff. And he was taking care of the business closing down. And people would ask, what are you guys going to do? Buy or rent or... So I don't know. God hasn't told me yet. You know, I'll let you know. I've got things to do. I'm packing and selling and all that. And uh, my da our daughter, who goes to a different church, said, hey... The church happened to have, at that time, three homes, and one of them became available. What do you say? I said, get me the paperwork. And that's what we're doing. <laughs> so we're renting for a year, which was nice to have a place to sit. We ended up going to that church for until May of last year, when God redirected us to here. We originally, we were going to come here, because when we came to Omaha, we went to Millard, yeah. Oh, yeah. when you guys were there, and that was the day that the waffles burned and the alarm went off yes, and i remember that, that was day. hysterical pt is like he's still talking and then he's like wait wait a minute do we have to evacuate it was great he preached through a smoke alarm yeah, yeah. 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 Was awesome. and that, that really fit into the message it was <laughs> like ridiculous and so anyway we were diverted for for a bit of time and and the lord made it clear to ken that we needed to come back come not come back but come to love church and it's so nice because we're with our tribe we've been in calvary chapel all our life mm -hmm. and we got diverted to a different in a different season to a different place which was fine god used us there but i'll tell you it's like dorothy clicking our heels no place like home there's no mm -hmm. place like home and it is it's it's beautiful i'm so grateful for the legacy um, the the heritage that was left by Pastor Chuck oh, Smith, absolutely. all these amazing pastors, um, and and it's you know there's a lot of great churches in the world, but there's something so so simple mm -hmm. about returning back to the Word of God and believing in the power of the Holy Spirit. I mean yeah. that's the that's the one two punch, and so I totally agree with you just how special that is. And so why don't you share with us like this tapestry of connections that God was was weaving in the background when he was bringing you here? Well, Ken, we've done a lot of work for Pastor Chuck, as, an, as Ken is as an engineer, and it was great because he pays right away. When you're near self-employed, you like that check. But it was more than that. When he bought, when they bought Marietta Hot Springs, which became Marietta Bible College, it came with a caveat with them not being able to, there was a, a coffee, it's a coffee house now, but, but it was a gay bar. And they had to continue to seriously honor that lease. And so when the lease was over, and you know Chuck went down there to talk with them often. I don't remember what the results were from some of that. But when they left, Ken got the project. Mm -hmm. So we were able to go in, clean house, and, and revive it, re re restore it to the, uh, to the purposes of God. Mm -hmm. So that was really and he's done a lot of other work at, at, at the college. He did the sanctuary and the gymnasium, and there's lots of other things. I like youth care. Oh, yeah. Uh, he's, there's right. up, in, up in the um, mountains, there's Start Twin away. Peaks. We'll talk about Twin Peaks first. Twin Peaks Conference Center that's been there for a long time, but he did the uh, dorms for the, go for the yeah. women and the women, and even built a place for Chuck. Because I don't know if people know, he was an astronomer, avid astronomer. So he really wanted a place so he could come and look at the stars. And then the conference center, I mean, the youth camp oh, at yeah. Green Valley. Do you remember? 
A whole lot of logs. A whole lot of logs. And Ken designed and engineered it all. That was fun. That was really, really fun. Yeah, I don't take the job. Okay. <laughs> Is there anything in particular that you wanted to... We built Chuck a house there, too. Not a house. It was... It was modest. Chuck is very modest. We had to remodel his place where he could come up and visit. Yep. Shared up there. Now you were involved in a lot. Yeah. That's really cool. And you know, we just the week fall coming up to January first, the Lord just really put it on his heart. We've been in Elevation Worship has that song, um, I've decided to follow Jesus. Now way back when, I was even asking Denise, I said, Do you remember that? We sang it quite differently, but the rendition of it, or whatever you would call it, however they change things, is unbelievable, and it brings him to tears. He evolves every time. How long the time I was living up in Crestline, yeah. be walking down there, they called Camp Sealy. I walked out every morning singing that song. Decided to follow Jesus. Mm -hmm. No, when no one goes with me, I still will fall. I just kept me the whole time. Yeah. So, Lord, here I am. But it's his, his, his kind of theme song to we. And he said, you know, I want to I wanna ask for the elders to pray for me, anoint me with us. And he kept saying, I said, do you really want to do that? I'll, I'll, get, it, I'll get it happening, which is the only one person I know was April. And she, as she's always so on top of things, took care of it. And we met that Sunday on January 1st, first with Jim, and we talked some. And then he brought PT over and then, uh, you know, brought Denise over and we all just started talking. We ended up talking for two hours. We had no idea it was that long. Yeah. And it was beautiful. Like Todd was saying, it's just like, it was like a reunion, huh? Talking about things that were familiar. You know, you just say one thing and you get it, you know? Um, Talking about Keith Green and Denise is like, oh, yeah, bananas for Jesus. I said, that's right, bananas for Jesus. And just the different aspects of, of people we know, like, um, I can see him. Red suspenders, Jesus stuff. Isn't that terrible? He talks about him all the time. Anyway, we talked about different people that we're familiar with. And um, Gail Irwin. Gail Irwin. There we go. Mm -mm. Were you ever? No. No, okay. Yeah, get, he was, he's red suspenders. He's a who? A wonderful <laughs> man. Very, can connect you to, if you can read the Jesus style, it's a must if you're in ministry, I think. So it was just amazing. You know, we're just like old friends getting together. And, and when they found out about Ken's work with the youth camp and Marietta and the places that they, that God had built their faith and where they met, Denise just, it overwhelmed her. And I think it overwhelmed PT. It was a blessing to see that unexpected to us. The whole morning was unexpected, but so designed by God. Mm. What we hadn't realized as we enjoyed working with Chuck, we enjoyed all the projects that we did. It never occurred to us the legacy it created Man. until Todd and Denise were talking about it. Wow. Not, it's like, so God is laying out reminders for Ken of where he's done well. And it started with Dave praying. Well, actually, it started in the huddle. It started the day, the first day we were here. Let's get real. Ken, all the way down. I felt was his home. All the way. And so anyway, it was just, you know, it was such a God thing. We all left. And I know, I was like, what? What's that? hot? Pen. You know, we went from closing bars down to closing a church down. It was great turning the lights out. But uh, I don't know. You know, I wouldn't, we wouldn't be here if we didn't have Jesus Harmony. It's so clear that your your story is directed by the Holy Spirit. Oh, like 100%. Oh, I mean, even at a time I didn't know. Mm -hmm. Wow. But God was Isn't that behind true? the scene working. Mm -hmm. And then at the table, I know that they wanted to talk about yeah. Christmas Eve Why don't service. you share about Christmas Eve, your experience at Christmas Eve? It was brought me tears. Mm. There was a point, you know, that table and everything was set up. And, you know, it's hard not to think about that. And as PT was talking and 
I think there was a time, I think he said the word something like everyone's welcome at the table. Well, you know, you know those things, you know, we've been, you know, but it's nice to be remi- reminded. He immediately, there's this thing that comes over him when, when the Holy Spirit is really ministering to his heart and his spirit. He, all, I knew he had left the room in a sense. His focus was on that table. And he's sitting with Jesus at that table saying, this is where we're going to be. Like, come on. I got to see that. It's so amazing and unexpected. You know, so many people don't get to share these wonderful things. Somebody dies, they just die. It's incredible support. But how he's preserving himself within Ken's heart in our lives. It pays to finish well. Mm-hmm. It pays to finish well. Our first day here, somebody took a picture behind us and we were worshiping God. Mm-hmm. And I thought when we came home that day, so I think they're on Facebook. He doesn't do Facebook. Sure enough, for I do years well, ago. Yeah, yeah. Well, he yeah. just does puzzles. It's a little too large. <laughs> and sure enough, there you, there you were, and you had like thirty pictures or something ridiculous. I thought, you know how it is. We, yes, I'm not. You know, we make mistakes, but it's like, am I in there? <laughs> of course, you know what I mean. It's like if you have a group picture, who do you look for first? Yourself. Hello. <laughs> there you go. Always. So, I think it was almost the last picture. I was like, oh. I said, Ken, you got to see this. So, of course, I downloaded it. It's the story just continued from that point on of worshiping God. We knew we were supposed to be here. We knew we were praising God for his faithfulness and his goodness to us to bring us to a place that is obviously loves Jesus. Hmm. We're with the tribe. We're with our tribe. Yeah. This is your family. Yeah. Oh, totally. All right. And what we were, where we were before wasn't a mistake. No. Christians can sometimes say, oh, well, you know, God, you were, no. There's no mistakes. No, there's there's no mistakes. Not at this point in our lives. Not that we don't make mistakes, but I mean, you thought, you, you become so clit from walking together with the Lord. Mm-hmm. You, yeah. you are where you need to be for this chapter. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, it's a blessing. It's not our it's this temporary home. Temporary yeah. home. Your tent. You're gonna get a new. You're gonna get your mansion. You get a new body. That's what he's wanting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He can be fast again when he wants. I'm so uh, I'm so inspired by your faith, both Thank of your you. faith, and um, speaking of finish well, I think you know it's it's so appropriate to kind of come full circle. You guys talked about the next generation. Mm -hmm. And so as we close out this story, what I would ask you is what would be one thing that you would want to deposit into the next generation? And I especially would love to hear from you because this, the privilege of what we're doing right here in documenting this is this lives on. This gets to be passed on to the next generation. So what would you want to leave as your legacy for them? Just got to live. It's all about Jesus. You know, you got you to gotta meet Jesus. Mm-hmm. And then give your life to him. Be a follower. Amen. A follower. No. It's great. Follow Jesus. The, the, great, the great shepherd. Mm-hmm. That's my song. I pray every morning for the praise of the good shepherd. Savior of my soul. Awesome. How about you? Any last words, too? What would I say? I love church particularly. Keep on going. You're doing well. There are problems in every church. I'm sure there's problems here. You all. <laughs> no, we're a perfect church. Absolutely. We don't have problems. But you know, I, again, over 40 years, we've seen a few things. I'm Where joking, by the way. Yeah, I know you are. Okay. 
Keep up the good fight. Choose to finish well. Yeah. Be aware. Don't miss out on the little things that Jesus is depositing. And for the men that run this church, stay firm, stay steadfast, be immovable, immovable, and I believe you guys are. Are you gonna make a mistake or two? Psst, whoa, that doesn't disqualify anybody. What we saw after the Jesus movement with mustard seed faith and the simplicity of our worship has matured and is a blessing. And I mean worship in every way, from the huddles that we go to, to what PT says or OC, whoever's speaking up to you. He fixed on Jesus. It's everything. And as a church, we need to pray for our guys. Satan's right there. We've walked with many, too many pastors that have fallen big time. It's awful. Mm -hmm. But let's pray for them, their spouses, their families. When I pray for the ones that I know that exist, I always say, okay, Lord, and anybody else I don't know that is part of this. Don't let the enemy divide you. Guys, I've got amazing, like I said, we've seen quite a things from Chuck Smith to untimely deaths and, unt and overwhelming failures, falls, can be avoided. And I know you guys are making every effort, and that's a blessing. Because when a, when a church body, and especially elders, I think, can trust what they see, you trust Jesus. Mm. It's huge. So keep on keeping on, even the young ones. You know, it's wonderful to see. That's my spiel. <laughs> wonderful. You guys have anything else you want to mind? I think we're good. We're all good. Yeah. We're all good. Yeah. It's a wrap. Thanks.